one, how do I find stocks that pay dividend in the leisure product industry? I'm going to use Charles Schwab account. So if you have Charles Schwab account, you log into your Charles Schwab account and you will enter your pass, your username and password and log in. So when you log into your Charles Schwab account, by default, you might be inside your account, especially in the summary page. Yeah, it will be in the summary page. From whatever default uh, page you land in, click on research and click on US market. And when you do that, I like to go to return to classic view. We are going to do that, but I like to show you the this market sectors on where you can find the market sector in the current view. You scroll down. When you click on research US market, you scroll down and you'll find sectors and industries. It is not a link you can click on. You just continue scrolling down a little bit right under that session. You will click on show more. And when you click on show more, you'll be able to find the market sectors and you'll go from there. You'll click on any sector you want to work on and you will choose the industry that you want to uh, check and you will see the sub industries inside the industry you will click on it and you will see the companies that are inside that sub industry you, by default it will be under performance and because we are looking for stocks that pay dividend, you will click on valuation where you can see dividend as a matrix. You will click on dividend and it will sort it out from the highest paid dividend to the lowest one for you. So I'm going to end it here for the modern view and I'm going to go back to research, US market, and I'll click on return to classic view. If you have that option, you could use it. Otherwise you could just uh, use the method that I just showed earlier to get to what we are going to work on today so when i click on return to classic view i will you will see industries you will click on industries and you will scroll down to find the market sectors and you will choose the sectors you wanted to work on and we are working on consumer discretionary so you will click on consumer discretionary sector and that will show you the different industries under the sectors and this for in this video we are going to check companies in leisure products industries and leisure product industry has one sub industry and you might have multiple sub industry in some but this one has one sub industry with 32 companies so when you click on the sub industry it will display 
the companies categorized under the sub industries and i'm going to just by default it will show the performance metrics and i'm just going to um, scroll down if you want to take a screenshot you can do that and it has page two as well and those companies we are going to retrieve the high paying dividends uh, companies from the list does not mean the others are bad companies we are looking for companies stocks that pay dividend to invest on to generate streams of income through dividend stocks so we will eliminate the companies that do not pay stocks and we will eliminate companies that pay low dividend rates as well so now that you have an idea of different type of companies in the under this sub industry we are going to go back to page one and in on page one because we are still under performance we are going to click on valuations and they have different type of metrics here but i use dividend yield as a matrix to as a filter to filter out companies that pay high dividend so at this stage you will set your criteria but now when you are on this page you will click on dividend yield and it will sort it out from the highest to the lowest so that's the filter number one for us and we can take a look at the filter the criteria that we set so we will filter by dividend and at this point you will need to set your dividend yield and for me i set three percent as the minimum i'm willing to take yours might be different and there are some companies that if you like that company you use their product and you like that company you could invest in their stocks if they even if they pay low dividend but for this purpose for this purpose or for this goal we are trying to create a one stream of one additional stream of income through dividend stocks so it is good to know why you are doing something so that you do not lose focus on why you on your goal so because we are trying to invest in dividend stocks we are going to set the minimum dividend rate that we do not want to go under because when you are investing in dividend stocks dividend is the income so you are going to invest a lot of your money to generate some sort of income through dividend so it's not get rich quick type of things you are and you are going to use your money as leverage the higher the dividend rate the more you will make on your money the lower the dividend rate the lower your income will be as well or the more money you have to invest to generate 
a target, a targeted income. So 3% is the minimum we are going to set. And that's the filter one. So that means you are going to look on the list and know where you will stop. So now that you know that the one, two, three, four, five made the car, the second thing you'll do is look at the name of the companies and paying attention to the entity tarot they have in the company's name. And you will eliminate anything that does not show you that that company is a corporation entity. So in the U.S., the different for a corporation to know, uh, to determine if that company is a corporation, you look for corporation in the tarot, uh, corp, uh, INC. So up to three percent, we have INC, we have corp, corp, INC, INC, INC. So they all pass the second filter. So what you are trying to avoid is partnership. Partnership company or limited companies pay higher dividend because the company does not file taxes but pass a loss and profit to investors and partners. They tend to pay higher dividend, but you will wait for their K1 to file your 1040. And usually you do not get it on time. So I'm looking for an example here, but I'm not seeing one here. So we will go back to things. So you will, uh, you if you in the list, you have LLC, LTD. Pretty much in partnership company. So, um, uh, but yeah, maybe I don't need to add it here. But yeah, LLC, the domination, the entity titles for those partnership companies will be LLC, LTD, limited, partner, partnership, you know, all of those. You do not want to invest in those. So in this scenario, they all pass the second filter. So at this stage, you will open your investment spreadsheets. And if you do not have one, I will suggest you create one. And how do you create your investment spreadsheet? So you can use a Google sheet or you can use a, an Excel spreadsheet, but tend to have a row for the company's name, the company's symbol, the market they are selling on, the price, the current price, the dividend rate. And yeah, I think I hear some things here, but anyway, the, the, the chart, Trend. I don't have proper tarot here, but the chart trend, the fifty, the price fifty two weeks low, fifty two weeks high, the sector, and in this example is consumer discretionary. You wanted to have a colon for sector, a colon for industry. In this example is leisure products and a colon for sub-industry, and in this example is leisure products as well. And then you'll have a colon for the year you went public. And it is good around uh, 52 weeks uh, uh, next to the dividend yield, it might be a good idea to have a colon for month that they pay the dividend, month of the quarter they pay dividend. It might come handy when you wanted to think about a, 
a quarter a, a quarter a month that you do not earn a lot in dividend income and you want to invest more in those company stocks that pay dividend in that quarter month that will come in handy so now let's go back so when you have your investment spreadsheet you will record the company's name the company symbol the price and the price is at the bottom for ash bro for instance is 69 dollars 68 cents and the price varies let's just say on a daily basis and multiple times during the day as well you'll record those three things and you'll record the dividend yield as well so those are one two three four data you will recall from this page for Ashbro, for Escolari INC, Smin and Wesson Bruin INC, Marine Product Corps, Sega, Sami Holding INC. And you can do that for the sub industry and if the um, industry has multiple sub industry you can continue you will go back to um, the top and click on the link that is uh, the title that is a link it will take you back to the sub industries list and you will click on the next sub industry if there is another one and it will take you back to the companies and you will you will click on valuation and from there you will click on dividend to sort them from the highest to the lowest and then you will um, check the company's name to see if they are corporation you trim it that way and then you record the one that pass your two filter the dividend you set and the corporation you copy the name of the company the symbol of the company the price of the company and the dividend yield when you are done with all the sub industries inside one industry it is time to move to the next step and the next step will be to analyze each one of those stocks that you recorded in your investment spreadsheet so to do that you will go back to research we are going to get out of the classic view so you'll go back to research and you click on stocks and you'll go to your investment spreadsheet and you'll just copy the symbol and go from there so we are going to see if we have leisure Uh, products in our industries and we do have leisures here so now when the research stocks open for you you will start doing your research so let's go back to our powerpoint and maybe we can go through that filter before we go back up so when you are eliminating companies that are now corporations you wanted to eliminate international companies as well a lot of time they might have sa at the end of it at the instead of INC for instance so not knowing if they are corporation or not it's just good we avoid them at the moment some international company will have INC in their tarot you add them to your spreadsheet if they met your dividend rate requirement so you'll do the research batch which I just explained if you have different type of um, sub industries you go through them to go through all of them to finish analyzing the stocks retrieving the high pay dividend stocks that are corporation and not international companies and record them in on your spreadsheet 
and then you will move to the next set. So in the next session, the filter you are going to use is the market the stock is selling on. You want to avoid OCT markets. So now let's go back to, and in fact, while we are here, we'll avoid new company. So you will say a year that you do not want the company to win public past the after that year. So anything after that year, you will consider that's new companies and you're not going to invest in those. And then you will analyze the chart. So let's go back and see um, our list. From here, So now we are going to research them. And the first one is Ashbro. In case you don't know, Ashbro sells stocks, uh, toys, I think. So you will enter the symbol and you will make sure you see the company's name and you click on it. So when you do that, there are things you are going to look for in this section the market the company stocks is selling on and here is nasdaq so you will enter nasdaq on your spreadsheet under the market the company is selling on you will enter nasdaq and the next thing you will look for is the price will change from if you are not doing the all the analysis in one day the price will change you don't need to update the price but it's good to compare the price is selling to the 52 weeks low and the 52 weeks high and in this instance 52 weeks low is 45.75 so pretty much that means at some point during the 52 weeks range the price went down and was selling the stock was selling for 45.75 and at some point it sold for 83 dollars to 45. so where it is sitting now it is closer to 83 than it is to 45. that means if that's a good company it is not the right time for you to buy some of the share because it's close to high than it is to low you want to buy it when it's close to low but you want to record the 52 weeks low and the 52 weeks high on your spreadsheets 52 weeks low and 52 weeks high you want to record the price on it and again that's something that changes as well but it is good to record those at the moment you are doing the research for your own reference later so when you are done with that, you scroll down and you look for the dividend section. You want to double check the dividend and gain dividends depending on when you did your research, the dividend yield, annual dividend yield can change as well. But you want to double check it and you want to see if it's paying you quarterly, how often it pays dividend and usually it will be quarter, but some of them can be once, um, like every six months. So, and you want it to see when it's going to make payment again. And if you want to uh, buy the stocks, this you and you want it to be a and the way I view it, if I wanted to buy this stock and it is on the low side, I will make sure I buy it before this date here. And then I will expect the dividend payment to be around November 15. But I will make sure I buy it before October 31st, if that makes sense. But anyway, but if it's low now, yeah, I will buy it now. I won't have to wait until October because it may not be on the low side. But anyway, at this point, it is on the high side. But 
you wanted to pay attention to this dividend payment month. It's not so, so, ma- so much about November, but it's about which month of the quarter it pays dividend. So your spreadsheet, you wanted to record that on it, somewhere on it. So for instance, for Ashbro, we could put, I can put it somewhere here. So the way I'm going to do it, let's go back to another spreadsheet here. And when you have your main master investment companies list, you can sort it out. I try to sort it out to have upward um, trial trend and growth and dip. But okay, so Ash Bro Month. Okay, so did you have it for Ash Bro? No. So the way I'm going to say is January, February, March is quarter one. So January is month one of quarter one. February is month two of quarter one. March is month three of quarter one. So you wanted to know which month is November in the quarter November belongs to. And you can have... You can have, um, you can note it down so that you do not forget. So, so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, September, October, November. No, it's not correct. September, September, October, November. No, still is not correct. So, okay. But anyway, December, November, October is quarter four. So quarter four, that's October, November, December. So that means November So that means November is month two of that quarter four. And October is month one. And December is month three. So now when we go back to where we were before, we will put... For Ashbro, we'll put M2. So that means in each quarter, because they pay dividend on a quarterly basis, in each quarter, you expect to earn your dividend income from Ashbro if you invest in them in the second month of that quarter. So that's how that will come into play for you to see how much you are making. And if you invest it, after, let's say you invest it in like a hundred different type of stocks, then after a quarter, when you uh, uh, pull your the, his, you, you, the history of your payments, you will be able to And if you make earning each month of a quarter, that means you will make dividend income every month of the year. And now you can analyze the total, the total and see which month you are making more, which month you are making less.
you can take a look at it to see which month you are making the least amount of income within one quarter. So that means for each one of those quarters, chances are that will be the the month you will make the least amount in dividend income. And you look at the stocks that are paying you income in that month to see if they are on the low side, you can invest more in them when you have money to invest. Or when you are investing in other companies, you'll then see when they are going to pay dividend to see if that will be the month you are making the list. Or if you have two companies that are on the low side and you want to invest in one of them because you have money to invest in one of them, you'll everything being equal, you'll see when they are making payment and if that's the month that you are making, if one is paying in the month that you make the less the least amount of income through dividend, you'll choose that one for instance. Assuming they both pay you the same dividend yield or the same yeah the same dividend yield but anyway so now that you pull information from this you will go back to the chart at this point you update your spreadsheet and if here you have OTC market you do not even continue with that company you just stop there and you just move to and search the next stock so while we are here i don't know how yours will show up though sometimes you'll have a two arrows here facing each other that you can click on to see the chart page or you might have show more that you can click on and it'll take you to the chart page and you want it to make sure you have maximum chart and maximum chart Otherwise, you click on it and choose maximum chart. So on this page, you want it to pay attention to when the companies went public. It's not necessarily when the company got founded. The company could have been around way before. But when it went public is when you be able to find data, data, financial data that you wanted to work with. So when the companies went public, this one, they put 1990, and then you wanted to record that on your spreadsheet as well. And we are talking about Ashbro. So you wanted to put on your spreadsheet when the company went public. And we have that. Now you look at the chart and analyze it. And I like to, you can name it whatever works for you, but here is what I like to look for. Upward trend, that means it's kind of oblique shape, like oblique. On the chart, you have the year at the bottom and you have the price in on a vertical axis and the year on the horizontal axis so you can see those are the price here prices here so when it's low that means the price is low and when it's high that means the price is high so you are looking to record on your spreadsheet upward trend growth and deep and if it's downward trend you want it to eliminate that stock so when you record the stocks that pass your dividend yield um, filter and then that pass your corporation entity criteria you apply the next filter the market they are selling on you are looking for new york exchange new york stock exchange ny se or naxda and OTC market or anything beside NASA and New York Stock Exchange, you are eliminating it. So that's another criteria right there. And the next criteria is the chart. You want maximum year to be, you want to set a year. 
that anything after that year you are not going to consider it. So by using those filters, those criteria, you are pretty much narrowing down the stocks on your spreadsheet. You are narrowing down the stocks that you wanted to keep and invest in. So in this, we are going to set 2000. Anything after 2000, we are not going to consider it. So, and you can... So here, I have some criteria here that I can show you. So parameter, parameter one is fine. I think parameter, okay, parameter one, I say stocks from companies in business before 1990 paying 3% or more annual dividend. Char, the charts show up world growth. Parameter two is stocks from companies in business before 1999 paying 6% or more annual dividends, the chart show growth and dip. So that means for a company that has a growth and dip chart, I do not want the company to go public after 1991 and I wanted to make sure it's paying me a higher dividend rate, 6% and up. And sometimes you can say 5% and up as well. It depends on what you set. And the next one is 5% and up annual dividend upward trend when public before 2000. So you can set different parameters to work with. So, and, and this one will be the first one. For instance, after you have your lease, you invest in the upward trend uh, stocks that pay 5% and up when public before when public before 2000. And when you are done investing in them, then you can go to parameter one. In fact, this will be parameter one in my opinion, yours could be different and parameter two and and this one will be parameter three. So after you invest in upward trend stocks that pay 5% and up dividend, you can refilter your spreadsheet to show you upward trend stocks that pay 3% you know, 3% to 5% because you're already investing in 5% and up 3% to 5% um, dividend yield. Uh, here I say that went public before 1990 and invest in those. And then after you invest in those, then you can refilter your spreadsheet to see dividend stocks that have trial growth and deep went public before 1990 nine and pay six percent and up or uh, yeah six percent and up you know so you can just set criteria that works for you and those are just example of criteria that I set for myself and when you know I'm explaining this to my kids I will tell them to make sure the growth and deep stocks are paying at least 5% and up. So, and then, but again, you record them all on your spreadsheet 3% and up. If 3% is the minimum you are willing to take and you can just go from there. So, and you can see that I even have some here that are lower than 3%. But then you can refilter it. You can turn it into a table and you can filter it. But I try to pull them to a different tab and then set the table where I can filter those. And for the growth and dip, for instance, if I wanted to just see five percent and up I 
with. Well, that is a lot, but let's see here. I'm just going to do some example for you to see. And then I'll say, okay. And it's just going to show me those growth and deep. In fact, when I'm here, first, what I will do here is, let me go all the way again. And I will, because the year matters to me, I will eliminate anything that is Okay, I have up to 1999. So there, I don't even have 2000 there. So again, I will go back and let's just filter. And if you are wondering how I created the table, when I copy, when you copy your When you copy your spreadsheet to to um, to the this tab, you can just form a, as a table, and that's how I did it. And automatically, you'll be able to filter based on the the tarot. So when you first pull it to here. It will when you click on the format that you want, it will ask you if you select the, the, the tarot because you have to select the data that you put on the spreadsheet. And I can just use this one. Don't think that let me just select something here. And this one is not a table. I'm just going to select something. And when you click on it, it will ask you if the table has a header. If it has a header, you select the header and you click OK. But I'm going to cancel it because I do not want to turn this into a table. But then I will copy from here to um, this one. And, and from here, if you are wondering how you will filter this to be to, because here you have upward trend and growth and deep. So if you do control F and you make sure your things are consistent, you can put upward, upward, for instance, and you select the column you have been putting that and, but it won't work, it won't filter for you it will select it will show you all of those but I think the way I was able to do it is copy duplicate the tab and then I turn one into a table and then from here I filter it growth and deep and upward so I filter it and then I copy it from here and I paste it so that I have growth and deep tab, I have upward tab as well. So, but you can play around once you have your master list, you can regroup it any way that works for you. But now, yeah, so let's make sure we don't get um, kicked out of this one. You look at the chart, but I would suggest you have you have an idea of different type of chart, chart so that you can compare this one to it. So that's what we are going to do. And I'm going to just um, go here and I'm going to search Chloros. Chloros. And you will see the Chloros chart, the maximum chart for Chloros. And this is upward trend. You can see that from when it went public, the price is low. And 
to now the price is high so you want to see that growth in the chart that's why you are looking you are using the maximum chart and you want to use growth and a growth oblique i like to say oblique and it is going to work faster when we take a look at some of the chart that we have in um So we set some criteria here, upward growth before 2000 annual dividend C is five, four, three, two. Yours might be different or growth and dip 6%, 4%, 5%, 3%, 6% and up, five, four. So pretty much the minimum will be four for growth and dip chart before 2000, then went probably before 2000. And for upward, you want the minimum 2% or 3% depending on what you want, 4%, 5%, and 6% up. But then let's check some of our chart. So this one is Chloros that we just look at. And that's upward. And this one is Cats. And Cats is upward trend as well. And I have the notes at the bottom of the company. So it's upward, but you can see it has growth and deep in it, but it's upward. And this one has is called gates. Call gate is upward. You can see that oblique. That the the line the the growth it is oblique. If I wanted to trace and narrow right now, it's going to be this way. So it's going to be oblique. That's what you want. You want that shape um, in on the chart. And you can see this one is Johnson and Johnson is upward trend as well. And this one is Enbridge. Enbridge is upward as well. We do have growth and dip here, but we do have this up. We can see when it went public compared to now. The gap is quite high, is upward as well. And no dip came close to when it went public. No dip. The price, when it's deep, it is down. It didn't come close to uh, the beginning. So that's upward trend. And uh, this one is general meals, has upward trend as well. So something you have to take a look a notice when you are looking at upward that you still have those zigzag, but the zigzag is small. That's why I'm saying upward. You can see the growth, even for growth and dip, you will see the growth as well. But you want it, you are you are expecting the growth and the dip to be that small. So when you are seeing those um zigzag small zigzag and you have that upward trend is upward that oblique um shape of the growth it is upward so that's why it's good to have some companies that you can and this one is general miss gis so and this one is coca-cola so it's upward as well although the zigzag is kind of pronounced here but from when it went public and now the growth is quite pronounced and you can you'll notice that all of them don't have the same type of chart the chart is unique is unique to each one of them so this one is H a home depot and home depot is upward trend as well so example of growth and deep chart so this one is Verizon so you can see that the growth is huge the deep is huge as well uh, but still it is is growing it has growth in it because the price is selling now compared to the price when it went public there is a big difference in it the price is selling now is higher than when it went public and there is no deep that at low to the point that it is at the same price that it went public decades prior that's what you want to look for so the growth and dip still need to show you 
the growth in the oblique sense but why i like to say growth and deep is the growth and the deep are very pronounced the zigzag for the growth is pronounced and the zigzag for the deep is pronounced as well you can see this deep here and you can see this growth here you can see this deep you can see the the growth here and you can see the deep here so because it's pronounced i will say growth and deep but again it has growth to it so and this one is pfizer pfizer has a growth and deep chart because it has big growth and big deep but again, the dip is nowhere near when it went public. That's very crucial. So you, that tells you that when you invest in this company, the case later, when you want to sell it, you will still make profit. In the meantime, you are making income through dividend, small income through dividend. But when you sell your stock, you will make profit because at no point it went down to the level that the that it was selling when it went public does that make sense you want to make sure you see your maximum chart that reflects that another one is what ford and ford is the one that i do not like because it's exactly what i'm saying to avoid but again if you like the company you can go with it and why i like ford in some way when they file bankruptcy the government bailed them out during the past recession i think but anyway they have been around since 1980 so that's a risk but i'm willing to take to have some but you have to you have to know why you are doing does that make sense so i do not like this chart of ford because it has big growth it has big deep but worse than that the deep can go low to the price that it went public decades prior and that's why you want to avoid but it does not make the habit to have those type of deep but it can happen and that is the year that i'm saying that they got bailed out by the government 19 2008 a recession they went that low to the price that they were selling in 1980 when they went public and that's dangerous a company that have those type of deep often should be avoided but so far he has it once but again that tells you that when you are in a recession you should expect this for to go low so they have big growth and they have big deep i'll call it growth and deep and for things like that i will expect a high dividend rate for it so now that we have an idea of the chart trend let's go back to ash bro And Ashbro, the child, I will say upward. Upward. Although you can see those uh, those zigzag uh, kind of pronounced for the growth, but not so much pronounced for the deep. Unless during the, um, the 2020 pandemic. But you can see the growth and you can see the deep. But I will say upward for ash bro and you will go to your spreadsheet and again you want to compare when they went public 1980 and the price they are selling you can see those horizontal line the price they are selling in 1980 is around what um 50 cents or something like that in fact when you put the the mouse on on that it will tell you 50 cents you can see it here 50 cents and compared to now that they are selling at 69, something that we saw earlier. So that's, there is growth in it, but they do have growth and deep, and the deep are nowhere pronounced or, you know, close to 50 cents. But they are around, you know, you can see that the price is here. When you are moving things, you can just see, or you can just look at the horizontal line that, is close to where you are looking as well and compare but yeah i will say upward 
for Ashbro, and you'll record that on your spreadsheets, wherever you choose to um, name your your chart you can use the terminology that you want to use but it might want to just be consistent i was not consistent in some of mine but as pro i have upward for it so, and then you will record that and if we saw the rates and you can see that my dividend rate back in when i did it is 346 and now it's 402 based on what we just saw so but i'm not going to update it and you can see that back then the price is even higher so when the price is high the dividend rate will go down because it's related the dividend rate is the equation is taking the price into consideration so when the price is changing is fluctuating the dividend rates will fluctuate as well but upward and if you think that's a good company based on this analysis i would say that's a good company to invest in in that instance you can highlight that one because you have multiple stocks on your spreadsheet you can highlight the one that you can use the color for upward and use another color for growth and deep that are good to invest in a color for upward trend that are good for you to invest in that way you can see those they will pop up for you and the one you invest in you can naturally change the color of the 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 you can color the row with one color for upward you color the row with another color for the growth and deep that are good for you to invest in and then you change the color of the test when you invest in them does that make sense you can use those color to color code your founding so now that we are done with ash pro based on my analysis you'll notice that i didn't say to to try to learn to know what the company is about i'm i'm not i don't even worry about that those are the criteria that i use to select dividend stocks to invest in and if you find a way that works for you, you might want to stick to that. But just know that there are different ways to find stocks, analyze, and invest in. But this is the way I do it. So Ashbro is good to invest in. But is it the right time to buy some share? The answer is no. Because the price is close to the highest 52 weeks range than it is to the 52 weeks low. So I will highlight on my spreadsheet, but I will not buy it right now. So now let's go to the next one. And in fact, let's see if we bought Ash Pro. Just to give you an example, you'll notice that when I recorded, it was selling for $79.39. And I don't know when because I like to date it, but I didn't date it. But I can see if we invest in it. Ash Bro. And we will see how much when we bought it. So we have Ashbro, and you'll see that we bought it for fifty-seven nineteen at some point and fifty-two ninety-two at some point as well. And I don't know. Oh, hold on. And it was. January and March because it's a toy company chances that after the holidays the price will go down and getting close to the holiday the price will go up so um, I didn't record the 52 weeks low and range during that time frame but those things will change over time but yeah S and you can see that Again, if I bought it for 50, at fifty-two dollars, it will be closer to forty-five than eighty-three back then as well. And again, I don't know what the fifty-two weeks. I don't remember what the fifty-two weeks low and high 
was back then in January and March. It could be different from what we have here. So the next one we will work on will be Escalade, Escala, Escalade, ESCA. So we'll search ESCA, Escalade Incorporated, INC. So Escalade Incorporate, so Incorporate, uh, in, it is INC, is a corporation as well. So that means you can see INC or you can see Incorporate at the end of the uh, company's name and it is Nagsda so that's good it passed that criteria it's selling for 14.94 and 14.94 is close to the 52 weeks high so it's not the right time to buy it and the 52 weeks low is $9.25 but at some point it sold for $16.49 we can check uh, the dividend yield and the month is the month that is paying dividend is quarterly in September, and that will be the first quarter of the month. So the first quarter, I think I'll just put it somewhere here. So that will be month one, and next bro is month two. So you'll record those and then you'll go to the chart and the chart it has been around since 1980 and the chart is growth and deep and again the, the tip can be close to when it went public. I have not seen only one time during the recession of 2008, but not in, during the pandemic. So it is growth and deep. It is okay. It is not ideal, but it is okay. And it has been around since 1980. Therefore, and let's see the grow, the interest rate. I think it's like 3%. For that level of risk, 3% is just too low. I want a growth and dip to pay me at least 5% dividend yield. So, 3.94 I think is low and I will not advise it but just because it's paying a low dividend rate but yeah the chart is growth and deep so let's go to the next one the next one is SWBI 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 is selling on NAXDA. So it passed the market um, criteria. It's selling for $12.27. $12.27 is close to 52 weeks high than it is to 52 weeks low, $8.02. So it's not the right time to buy if that's a good company. And the dividend is 3.93% and it's paying in which quarter is july which quarter month is july again okay so let's go to july is seven so this is month three of quarter one so month three of another quarter so july is month one of quarter three so is uh month one of a quarter 
that they pay quarterly the first month of the quarter. That's pretty much what I meant by that. So you click on show more to see the maximum chart and the maximum chart and the year they went public. 2000, they went public before 2000. So that's good. You want to see the year, the star year there. It should not be after 2000 for the criteria that we say. So let's look at this. We are seeing the growth in it because the price is selling um, when it went public and the price is selling now. The price is selling now is higher. That, that show growth. But now we are seeing those big zigzag growth and those big zigzag dip as well. But the growth are bigger than the dip. So therefore it is good. But again, what is the rate again? 390 something, right? It is low. So you do not want to prioritize investing in those growth and deep char stocks that pay you less than 5% in my opinion. You can have them on your spreadsheet after you invest in all the above. Then you can see which one are the other ones you want to include. But I think the dividend is just too low because again let's see ashbro here so if ashbro is paying you four percent and it is upward has been around since 1980 and it is upward trend and it's paying you four percent or two like right now now based on when i have here Still is a better deal than that company and Escalator, in my opinion. Yes, you want it to be diversified, but not that type of diversification. So the way that growth is, that chart growth is, and the way Escalator chart growth is, and they are paying about 3% dividend yield. If they are all on the low side, including Ashbro, I'll prefer to pull, if I have, they mean to buy all three. I'll prefer to put all the money in Ashbro because it has upward and is paying about the same dividend yield as the other two, but has upward growth and the other two has growth and deep. Does that make sense? So I'll prefer to buy Ashbro out of the three. So which one is the next one? In the list MPX MPX Marine Product Corporation is selling on New York Stock Exchange market so it passed that filter let's check the dividend yield and the uh, month they pay dividend 355 September month 2 of the quarter September uh, no month 3 of quarter 3 September if month 3 of quarter 3 and is selling for $15.79 and is close to 52 weeks high than it is to 52 weeks low. $7.75 and $17.81. So you, it's not the time to buy these stocks if that's a good one. I say if because we are not done analyzing it. So we are going to look at the maximum chart. And the maximum chart is growth and deep. You can see those big growth and those big deep. But no deep is close to when it went public. But it went public in, let me see, in 2001. <laughs> so, well, okay, so let's say if it went public before 2000, I will consider it to be on a, what was the rate again? Three something? 3.55. Again, Ashbro beat it. But 
he went public he, he went public in 2020 in 2001 in 2001 therefore it didn't pass that filter it is growth and deep a good growth and deep the deep are kind of huge but they don't go down all the way to the price that it went public so that's a good thing but again it is a new company that's where it didn't pass our criteria it didn't meet the company age for us it is a new company for us for the data that we have to work with but it has good growth and deep and the second thing that is not good is the dividend annual dividend rate is low so at least five percent will be good but again it didn't pass the 2000 anything before 2000 criteria therefore i will not advise we invest in it and again that's based on the criteria that we say if you say a different criteria it might pass yours so and out of we are not done so far Ashbro is the only one i think the last one is s g a m y so let's analyze that one as well s g d a m y and let's go check information on it okay so the market is selling on is otc market so it isn't pass this criteria therefore we are not even going to check the dividend and the chart it isn't pass this that's it something to consider when you have adr you want to read the fine print that means it's going to charge a type of fee by the bank that custodies this adr but anyway otc market that means over the counter we do not want that therefore it is it didn't mean the cut it is not going to be you don't need to even continue the research on it and that concludes the different type of companies that pass off two criteria from the industry page so ashbro is the best one followed by uh smith uh, s w i b and escalade let me see the year for them here yeah so i don't know why i have 2000 for this one is it probably but anyway yeah but again you know you can color code what you like to work with as well so a lot of things will let will lead to your spreadsheet you don't need to delete them from your spreadsheet but you can color code the one that you like from them so i'm even going to take this out of here so that or you can have a colon to include invest go to invest or not go to invest you know good to invest in you can put things like that and not good to invest in and you can put why as well if later you wanted to rely on your notes you can put why and i don't even because the dividend yield is low compared to ashbro related to the type of growth and deep that they have and the swbi i believe has a better growth and deep no i think it's the mps that has a better growth and deep but it was too young so it is even meant to out it's even got to our spreadsheet here but yeah you know yeah th those oh marine i have marine here marine products i mps i put level i'm not sure why i put level here and i put 2000 is 2002 here oh 2002 but yeah and sometimes depending on the chart if you want you can invest some in it but you just know that 
you are not going to put all of your money in it or things like that and there is one here okay so here on our on when we are doing the research it was 293 and i think because the price could have gone up but when i was doing my research in medica there so let's take a look at it so that is i intentionally added to the one that i will analyze but i didn't really want to um, go below three percent but that's just to tell you that that three percent when you have some rates that are close to it you want to take a look at it to see how that company is because when the price is on the low side the dividend rates will be higher so let's see r is inc so it passed that rgr so rgr but i will say is on the the price will be on the high side that's why the dividend rate is low now oh in fact it went to another um bracket it is close to 52 weeks range here so it's selling for 51.50 and the 52 weeks the low is 49.5 and 52 weeks high is 63 so it's close to the the highlight is showing you the price where it is on the line so the 50, the, the current price is close to 59.5 than it is to 63 the dividend yield is 2.93 pain in august and let's see the chart here and it is selling on New York Stock Exchange. It passed that criteria. And the maximum chart, okay, has upward, but it has quite a bit of growth and dip here though. 1982, okay. And you can see the growth. When it went public, 21 cents. Now it's selling for $51. So growth and dip and uh, is upward in that sense but when you take this session here it has got a bit of growth and deep but it's not like a huge growth huge deep either so you can go with upward trend or you can go with growth and deep trend either one will work for it again you can add it to your spreadsheet but in my opinion as bro be them but back then the the in the dividend yield was on the high side but thank you so much <laughs> for watching this conclude the how to analyze stocks in the leisure products company uh, in the leisure products industries and and that's pretty much how to use different type of criteria to analyze them and select or take a note next to the one you are going to buy and when it's on the low side is you like the company it pass your criteria is on the low side like the way this one is is when you will if you have money to buy you will click on buy and then you will proceed from there we thank you very much for watching our videos we thank you you all that subscribe to our channel we thank you very much for all your comment thank you for your time on our channel we share different ways to um, save money and different ways to make money to reach your financial independence where you do not depend on your employer to put food on your table and investing in dividend stocks is just one way to make money where you do not trade your time for money you work hard to make money and you leverage that money by using it to invest in dividend stocks so it's good to have a budget where you track your income and you track your expenses as well and have a category have you know so that you live 
you you know you know how much you are allocate enough for your expenses and and then you allocate enough for your expenses and allocate as well for your investment and when you invest you promote use leverage your income by putting some of your money to work you don't want to live from paycheck to paycheck spending everything you make but have a budget the budget does not tells you how you spend your money but it just make sure you are locating your in your income in a way that you are putting enough on the side for your expenses and then you are investing as well so we like to have our monthly expenses and then budget for our irregular expenses and i like to call it irregular expenses because those are expenses that you do not spend on on a monthly basis but can happen sometimes during the year so you want to uh, estimate the whole amount for the year and then divide it by 12 to determine how much you need to save to put in your saving on a monthly basis to to be able to have to pay for those irregular expenses in addition to your monthly expenses as well and if all of that fit within your income then you see how much you have left to invest and you can invest in your own business or you can invest in the stock markets or a combination of the two and knowing your uh, uh, your irregular your monthly expenses and that you budget and your irregular expenses as well you use that to determine how much income you want to make through dividend over time and let's just take an example that saying that your irregular expenses your irregular expenses no your monthly expenses basic monthly expenses are around 1000 for instance if you use a calculator and you say okay 1000 amount for your expenses not irregular expenses included and maybe another 1000 for irregular expenses a month so times 12 will tell you how much you need for the year okay so if you want to make that in dividend income how much do you have to invest to generate twenty four thousand dollars a year in dividend income so if you are investing in five percent dividend yield income you will divide that by that rate so that will be 0.05 so you need to invest four hundred eighty thousand dollars to at five in five percent type of stocks to generate twenty four thousand dollars a year as you can see you invest a lot of your money to generate that layer of dividend income but at the same time by carefully selecting your stocks upward type of growth stocks you know that that your the value of that 480 invested will grow exponentially over the years and when you decided to sell your stocks you will make way more but without selling your stocks you know that you are making income through dividend to provide for yourself and it takes the worry that you do not depend on your paycheck for your basic need at the same time you know that um if the stock market is down because of a cry economical crisis you don't need to sell your stocks to generate revenue the income through the dividend is there for you of course some companies may not pay dividend or might pay less but you will still generate some income 
through it. And while you are investing in those stocks and you are reinvesting the dividend, you will buy more share and you will make more than 24000 in dividend income. So when you take this 40, 480, you are not going to invest all of that in one day or in a year. You can set a goal, let's say 10 years. So we'll divide this by 10. So that means in a year, you want to invest about 48,000 to be able to generate 24,000 in 10 years in dividend income. So 48,000 a year divided by 12 means in a month, you want to invest 4,000. Yeah, you may not be able to invest 4,000, but if you can even do 100 a month, that's a star. And over time, you will continue doing more. So 4,000 every month for 10 years becomes a routine. So you want to find what you are comfortable with that every month you will be able to invest. And for 10 years and whatever you, you generate in dividend income in a year, that means in 10 years or in 12 years, you'll be generating that in a month. Does that make sense? If in a year you, you, you earn, let's just say $50. So if you make $50 in dividend income in a year, that, and you keep investing what you are investing every month for 10 years, that means what you are making in dividend income in a year, in year one, you'll be making that on a monthly basis after 10 or 12 years. So you want to find a routine that works for you if you are a routine type person and just invest like that. And, and for this purpose is to generate a stream of income, I recommend you do that in a brokerage account. Now in a rough IRA. That way at any time you want to touch your money, you can. But just know that those dividend income, even if you reinvest them, they are taxable. Therefore, you will be adding them to your, you will you'll, you'll get 1099 from Charles Schwab and you will include those dividend income on your 1040. on your 1040 and you will be making incomes through dividend a little by little and they will accumulate thank you so much for watching i'm afiavi libreman uh, founder of libreman consulting llc youtube channel and ninasoap.com our blog on our blog you can find free download spreadsheet you can use to uh, track your finances or to manage your business as well. Thank you so much for your time.